<laughs> That's cool. Uh, let me see something. I like I like doing this type of thing when I'm doing it, where I can just come here. And yeah. Did you? One stop. All right, let's do. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it has so much fun, right? Like yeah. Loopers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. Tell me your first and last name. Uh, Curtis Sensenek. Sensenek. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah. Again, yeah. pleasure to meet you, Curtis. Nice to meet you too. Uh, amazing audience. We are live. Let me tell you where we are. We're recording from Mouth Media Network Studios in New York. You should check out a great show about the podcasting industry. The word from Mouth on iTunes at mouthpodcast.com or wherever the best podcast are found. With us, we have Curtis. This should be some fun. Yeah, this is cool. <laughs> This but Curtis, great. do tell me, my friend, which of your talents do you think is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history? Good question. Um, I would say that I'm here because I have a travel show right. that I'm making, and this area is all a bunch of people that work in the travel industry. And so uh, I'm here, you're here, we're doing similar stuff, actually. You're doing yeah. podcasts, I'm doing uh, video. Yeah. And I think that... Well, it's serendipitous, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I love it, right? <laughs> I love to see how things connect. Who yeah. did you learn the skill of, um, how should I put this? Where should I go with this? <laughs> you know what? I'll go with being the the um, the person that is entrusted with history, right? Which is <laughs> amazing, right? Yeah. yeah. Who did you learn that from? Well, that, that's a, something I've been thinking about a lot recently, actually, because I am, like I said, I'm, I'm doing this show where I'm looking at storylines that go through big parts of the world, and I'm, I'm working on Europe right now, and I focused on Athens, where it's often called the birthplace of Western civilization, the ancient Greeks, and then uh, right now I'm working on the Roman Empire, and how that cuts, and then it breaks into two pieces, and it becomes the Byzantine Empire, and then the Ottoman Empire. And I guess I'm, I'm thinking, like, this stuff is really fascinating. I love to travel. I love to explore. And as I was exploring when I was younger, I was like, oh, this is, you know, cool. It's like a building here. But I didn't know the storylines. I didn't really know it well. And as I traveled more, I said, you know, there's, there's so, much, so many interesting stories here and so much interesting history that I don't know that well. I want to learn more. And so I started learning more. And then I said, this is great. These are great stories. I want to start making videos about it. And that's where I'm at now. But now I'm like, you know, like, I don't know that I know this much. And there's a huge iceberg underneath with so much more. And the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. So uh, it's something I think about a lot. And sometimes I get a little insecure, like, okay, who, who am I to be doing these stories? Hmm. But then, uh, you know, it's like, well, you just present your perspective, what you know at this point, what you think about it, and present your perspective. And these are always valuable. Like, the more we can learn different perspectives, the more informed you are, and the more ver more varied those perspectives are, the broader your worldview is. Hmm. Um, That's, and that brings us to the name of the website, right? Worldview, exactly. Yeah, Worldviewfilms.com. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. All right, all right. I love that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I love the idea, and I think it's a principle in terms of people giving their perception of something and others respecting that. Uh, one thing doesn't work without the other. Uh, but how dare you not do the work you need to do, right? Thinking of the other. Mm -hmm. So you've stepped out, right? And mm -hmm. yeah, well done, well done. Yeah, it's it's like that's no reason not to do it. You should exactly. still do it. Yeah. Because you'll never be the expert in the world on the Roman Empire or anything. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, people dedicate their lives studying that. Yeah. And that's okay, you know, it's present your perspective. Which is going to be really cool, especially the way you're setting it up, right? Where yeah. someone can go through and encounter it. How does it work? Explain. Um, so how my story Your unfolds, website. and uh, um, so, so you, uh, if you go to my site, you'll you'll see my YouTube channel, and it, that that's where it is now. I have a sponsor uh, of the show now, Allianz Travel Insurance, and um, you know, they basically I needed a sponsor to keep going, and yeah. I worked for hard, idea. and, they, and yeah. they finally they finally they you know they're sponsoring me, and so if you go to the YouTube channel, you can watch. Um, the videos and each um, episode now is sort of building on the other. So um, Athens, yeah, like I mentioned, was one of the first ones. The Roman Empire, th this is an interesting story if you don't know it. The Roman Empire is sort of conquering everything and they come to Athens 
and they're like, wow, you guys are really smart and developed and you have like all this advanced technology and art and philosophy. And they didn't ransack the city, but they stole all the ideas or they took all the ideas. They even took sculptures and art, put it on wagons, took it back to Rome and then had the sculptures in Rome copy it exactly. Wow. So if you go to the Met, if you go to a lot of art museums around the world, the first Roman stuff you'll see on the plaque, it usually says Roman copy of a Greek original. Wow. Yeah, and the Roman <laughs> copies are newer. The Roman copies are from like 200 BC and the Greek original is from like 474 BC or 400 or 500 BC. What was the purpose of that? Um, well, it's a good question because why did Rome copy specifically and i think they were almost um they're uh uh like infatuated with greek culture and they're like whoa this is so cool and so all the cool people and the hip people in rome were copying greek there started using greek words and Understood. dressing like the greeks and Understood. like it was the hip thing to it's do like, because they're so TV, advanced right? it's yeah like, that was it's like i mean a low grade tv right like they went they saw the yeah. culture and took from it it's similar yeah cultural like the spread of culture if if groups are like that's cool and hip and they copy it that's how culture spreads yeah it's for better or for worse interesting yeah, for better, yeah. <laughs> he's definitely interacted with this a lot uh, tell me one other thing you've done consistently over the last three years that's a good question um consistently i started doing yoga this is completely unrelated is, cool. is that okay it, how, just so i, I don't want to talk about the show the whole time too, probably I think, yeah. yeah but i started doing yoga every day um and I've been pretty consistent about that. Mm -hmm. um, How does it make you feel? Uh, it, it makes me feel really good. I think yoga is special and as an exercise where it's like a physical exercise, but it's also mental. Yeah. So it's like um, it's like a, uh, a meditation. You know, maybe you combine exercise and meditation. And so after afterwards, I'm like really. I'm feeling Sandals, good, yeah. yeah. And then I don't really get upset about stuff easily during the day for the rest of the day. And if I miss it, sometimes I notice like I'll be like I get a little more upset, and I'll think, oh man, yeah. I gotta calm down. <laughs> <laughs> and if I have yoga, I'm just like, all right, it's cool. <laughs> all right, it's all right. Well, let's switch gears for a moment. Sure. Yeah, let me invite you now into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm blue Caribbean water. Yeah? What is your nice. earliest childhood memory, Peter? Oh man, that is interesting. I I'm not sure if I actually remember this or if it's me when I'm older seeing pictures. Um, but I was this is unique. I mean, this is something different. I was born in Africa, um, in Swaziland, Mbaban, Swaziland, and um, I was only a year and a half old when I came back to the United States. My parents were American citizens, but they were living there for three years. And we had an orange rug in our house. It was a small, you know, small one room house. And um, I remember laying on the floor, like looking at the perimeter of the orange rug. And I think I was like trying to crawl. <laughs> I had my goal of like trying to crawl. <laughs> you remember that? I, I think so. Although there is pictures of me on that orange rug. So maybe it's just uh, me seeing the pictures. But I, I, I feel like I remember being a baby on the floor, like trying to uh, figure out how cool. to get to the edge. <laughs> Why do you think that memory is so clear? That's a good question. Oh, you know, I never thought about this, but I wonder if it's related to my personality trait of exploration and curiosity, where like I'm always trying to explore. I'm so curious, which you know presents itself in my <laughs> show. That's why I do a show like I do. Yeah. Maybe I was trying to explore what's beyond the orange carpet. That's amazing. <laughs> where did the carpet come from? It was it something from uh, Swazi? Uh, probably from oh, Swaziland. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I, uh, yeah, right. oh, that's cool. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture sure. you created in my mind? Providing it was from Swazi, right? I just like to add, right, that you were the, not just the explorer, but the person that experienced uh, in full benefit of culture changes, right? Like you took, your parents took something from there and brought it back. Right. And now to see that you're doing that by, I mean, in a virtual space, right? Where you're right. taking the history, presenting it so other people can explore. It's pretty fascinating how that exactly. connects. Yeah. And I think that's, I have to give my parents credit for the whole probably why I'm doing what I'm doing is we also lived in Sudan, uh, in Khartoum, Sudan for three years when I was oh. eight to 11. And I remember that very clearly. That was actually 
especially really formative years. The interesting thing about that is we lived in the same city at the same time that Osama bin Laden lived there. So <laughs> he wasn't famous and we didn't know that, but years later we read a BBC article and we're like, oh man. So um, yeah, that was pretty crazy. We, we may have seen him on the streets. Yeah, My mom swears she saw him yeah. one time because she's like, seen pictures. She's like, he looked kind of shady. <laughs> um, but we lived there for three years and that was like very formative. It was during a civil war. It, it was, the economy was extremely depressed. It was, um, you know, it, it, they were on the on the list of terrorist sponsoring states by the United States because of Osama bin Laden, um, and so it was not. It was a pretty crazy time to be there, but it definitely broadened my perspective a lot. Like it was ninety nine percent Muslim, mm -hmm. and most of my friends were Muslim, and you know, I I learned that the, these are all people, and that there's differences, but it's not. Uh, it's not like these are bad people, these are good people. And I think coming back to the United States, I was sort of shocked by how, um, I don't want to say, like sort of how people didn't understand lots of the parts of the world where things were kind of black and white. And as I got older and I saw George Bush becoming president and um, he was sort of, you're either with us or against us, these are evil people, these are good people. I was like, yeah, it's not really true. Yeah. And now with Trump, it's a similar sort of separation. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liberal, so I mean, that's my perspective. But yeah. you didn't see that sort of contrast in the Obama administration of like, these are good people, these are bad people. Um, but you do see, and so I think, especially leading up to the Iraq war with the uh, with Trump, I was like, this is not this is not a good idea, and um, I, this isn't a good this is not a good perspective to have in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, so we saw how that went, and so, I, but that's definitely why I think I do what I do because I have this kind of perspective on the world that just I'm really curious about, it and I love learning about, it and I've experienced. Uh, I'm lucky to have experienced a lot, lots of parts when I was younger, and I think that totally funnels into my perspective of what I do. That's did. amazing. What was your favorite song when you were 12? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good question. I don't know. My, <laughs> my parents were like sort of, they were like, I wouldn't say conservative, but they're Christian. They're very, they're pretty religious, right. and so they would make me listen to Christian rock music. <laughs> right. You remember one of the songs? <laughs> yeah, and I think I like. I think there's this band called DC Talk that I really like. Right. They were they yeah they were there. I guess they were they were so um, devout Christians that. My music had to be Christian, yeah. what song <laughs> which was until that? I argued to say, let me listen to normal <laughs> Christian music. What song from DC? Oh, what song? Man, I don't know. I think there was one song called Jesus Freak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Looking, thinking back on that, I haven't thought about that in a while. It's, it is kind of it's funny. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about, about that kind of music, but... You know, as long as it's a, it's a good good influence, I guess it's okay. Go for it, yeah, love it. Right. <laughs> well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. Have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Ah, hmm. I feel like I'm still learning my skills. I feel like I. I uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm sure I have skills to pass on yet. That's a good question. I, it's cool. I should. Um, well, I do work. I do collaborate with a lot of people, and I like to teach them stuff. But I also like to learn stuff from them. Uh, so I'm a yeah. I'm a big fan of collaboration, and like everyone comes in and they have different skill sets, and then we help each other learn everything. Community. Yeah, community. No, I have a girlfriend. No, okay. no, no, no children, but I have a girlfriend. Do you believe in God? Um, I I would say yes I do but I I f I have I guess I feel kind of strong I would say I'm agnostic in the sense that I don't like when people say I know there's a God I don't like when people say I know there's not a God because you don't know we don't nobody knows no one has any <laughs> secret information yeah. none of us know so I think uh, there should be a lot more humility around that question than most people around the world okay. you know religious people think they know and um, atheists think they know I was like no none of you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that answer. Yeah. yeah. I love that. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, what would you say that is? Um, I would say I am pretty committed to trying to, to share, ver share various 
perspectives. I, I want people to understand different perspectives around the world. Sweet. Yeah. Because this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, well, I think this is awesome. I've heard you've been all over doing tons of these interviews, so that's impressive. Um, and good work. Keep it up. I appreciate that. Keep it up as well. Curtis, this has been a great pleasure. Again, thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Cut. Nice. Boom. Amazing cool. audience. Loving it. We're at the Voyager. Hey, Kathy. We're at the Voyager headquarters having a ton of fun. Amazing people in the travel sphere. Wow. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So again, thanks for your time. Let's see who's next. Laters.